How are you? How are you? Fine. Good, very good. Now you see, this is the last poem and the last lesson for class 12. I have covered uh, the textbook, Flamingo, isn't it? And now you have the poems, you know, the first poem was my mother at six, 66, and elementary school classroom in a slum. Third one was uh, Keeping Quiet, fourth one, A Thing of Beauty, and fifth one, the roadside stand and the sixth and the last one on Jennifer's Tigers. On Jennifer's Tigers. When you first hear this title, what we think is that, or what comes to our mind is that on Jennifer has got some tigers and she is looking after those tigers, isn't it? On Jennifer's possessive. Uh, therefore, we will say, ah, that is, all these tigers belong to uh, Aunt Jennifer. But when you take the poem and start reading, you will know that these tigers are not alive. They are on a, we say, a tapestry panel, a tapestry panel, a frame, or a, what we should say, a piece of cloth, you can say, that is a tapestry panel. And uh, the tigers are uh, nothing but uh, the needlework of Aunt Jennifer, a panel round or square and on that she is doing some needle work with ivory needles, ivory needles, uh, bright colored thread, uh, using bright colored thread, uh, that is, and she has, she has done many tigers on that, naturally that can, that uh, panel would be comparatively uh, not a very small one anyhow, because there are many tigers. She has already done needlework. And uh, while doing the needlework, she is very tired. Uh, it's very difficult even to, as the point says, even the ivory needle, she cannot, uh, she, she cannot, uh, 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 the ones, what happens is, she cannot take out, pull, very hard to pull, to do like this now. And then I have to pull it out. So even that becomes difficult for her because she is so terrified. And why is she terrified? Not because of this, the tigers that she herself is uh, uh, doing with her needles, but for some other thing. Tigers, tiger is a symbol. Tiger is a symbol of what? You can see now. I will just show you. What. Tiger means men are tigers. In the, in, in the world of Aunt Jennifer. We don't know who is Aunt Jennifer. And the interesting thing is that this poem is narrated by someone, anonymous person, listen. a person whose name is not known to us. So she is or he is reciting this poem or reading out this poem. Or can say she is or he is um, trying to present a picture. A picture of, when you read further, you will know, male domination. Male domination, in the in that world of male domination, uh, women, they are slaves. Men, they are masters. So, masters, they are that you will find. Now, as I told you, tigers, tigers means men. In the world of Aunt, Aunt Jennifer, tigers, they are men. Means, uh, she calls Men tigers. Why? The reason why? Question. The reason is they can prance. Prance means jump like this. Spring action here. So when do you do like this? When you are free, when you are conf when you are uh, we are we are proud, or when you have got confidence, when you when you find there's nobody to question. For example, in the classroom, you can be pranced like this. You cannot do. <laughs> Teacher will come and catch you all of you. So that you cannot do. So, an absolute freedom. This tigers, this, this, uh, the needle work has been, needle work has been done in such a way, these tigers are prancing. <laughs> that means, men in this world, the, that is the, that frame or panel is the world of the world of Aunt Jennifer, and that represents 
or that is a symbol of world. In this world, many brands, like Tiger's brands, the tapestry panel of Aunt Jennifer. And they are bright topaz, topaz, that is yellow precious stone. Topaz is the name of a, a precious stone, like we have got a sapphire, isn't it? Sapphire and so on. So this is topaz. Very bright yellow stone. That means again it is a metaphor. They are like topaz in this world. They are very bright and they are very precious. In society or in this world, they are very precious. That means there are the opposite party is not precious. Prance, implied meaning is the the other person cannot do it. The gender gap. This. Males can do, females cannot. Males are precious, females are not. See, that is implied. The world of greed, huh? They are, <laughs> they are living in a world of greed. What is the opposite of that is world of desert. So world of greed means you have everything, paradise. Whatever you want, everything is at your command. But what about women? Nothing. So that is do not fear. They don't fear anybody. But women, they fear everybody. They live in a fear, fearful world, I guess. Fear-stricken world. Sleek and chivalrous. Men are sleek, elegant, good-looking and chivalrous. Chivalrous is the word that is uh, the origin is Sheval, C-H-E-V-A-L, Sheval. Sheval means horse. A person who goes around on horseback is, is a chival, uh, chivalrous. Now such persons, in the Middle Ages, there was an, an institution called a knighthood, K-N-I-G-H-T, H double O D, boyhood, knighthood, K N I G H T, knight, knighthood. You might you might have come across John Keats' poem, and the poem opens, La Belle Dame Sans Mercy. The poem opens like this: What ails the knight at arms? Alone and palely loitering, the wind, the wind, the, the hedges withered from the lake, and no birds sing. So their night, it was the duty of night, means soldiers who go around on horseback, fully armed. What, is, what was their function? To go around and see whether there are any ladies in distress. It was their duty to save them. Saint George the night, you have heard of that. You can see Saint George statue. Uh, just near that you will find a lady crying, a statue of a lady crying. And St. George is killing a dragon. She was in trouble, so this knight, she, he, they are fully armed people. They wear uh, armor also, they have got sword and uh, spear and whatever, they, whatever weapons necessary they would carry with them. They go on horseback. So from there comes this uh, meaning chivalrous. Chivalrous means person who is very gentle and courteous to his ladies. So a person is chivalrous means he, is, he behaves like the knights of the 14th century who used to protect ladies who were in distress. So men here they are sleek and chivalrous. So that is, they have got all the good qualities. They are very good looking. They are all, it is supposed that whatever women, they are not Implied meaning is that they are not like that. Then you have pace with the certainty. Certainty means confidence. Pace means walk. This walking. Slowly walking. As if not they are afraid of nothing in this world. So pace with the certainty. They move around with the confidence. Nothing will hurt them. That is it. They are not afraid of anybody. And Unafraid. So they serve men. Tigers. Men 
in this world of Aunt Jennifer, they are tigers. Or tigers are symbols of men. What kind of men? Men who can prance, men who are who are like bright robbers, men who live in world of green grass, green. Well, of green, that means you have whatever rich world. Do they don't fear anybody? They are very good looking and uh, they are very courteous. It is, uh, they have got all the good qualities of a gentleman. Face with certainty, they always move in society with full confidence and prancing proud. Already they have the meaning prancing proud as if in a spring moment. Because you are moving like this means you have nothing to worry, nobody to question, there is no restrictions and unafraid. The tiger, tiger is the symbol of man, powerful, all powerful, master, lord, patriarch, patriarch means big father, patriarch is your friend, that is the, that is the very high position in the church the hierarchy of the church, patriarch, this. So patriarch means the, the, the male head of a family, patriarch. You remember, the, you, you remember there was a time of undivided families, this. many families living together. So in such situations, one man on the head and he is the patriarch. He's like a king, yes. And now, here we have got women. Women, their fingers fluttering, shivering. Because, heart of heart, they are afraid of everybody. That's why your fingers are fluttering. The massive weight, they always carry a massive weight on them. Huge weight, huge burden. The moment that, the moment a girl is born, girl child is born, what will happen is that they, a massive weight on her. And she has got a number of restrictions. Innumerable, he can say. But in this case, he can prance, he is top us, he paces with the confidence. <laughs> but on the other hand, he has full of restriction that you can see, you, know, you can experience yourself. That is a massive weight. Sits heavily. No escape from that. Something sits, something sits on him is you cannot escape from him. There is no question of escaping. Till death, till you are taken your grave, you carry this with you, that burden with you. All the restrictions are there. Marriage is an institution, a traditional institution that imposes, or we, we, we must have 101 restrictions on women. That is according to one Jennifer. Okay. Yes, now also, to an extent, dead. They are living, but they are dead. They are like dead people. Their voice is not heard. They cannot complain. Nobody asks, ask them, what do you want? What's your problem? There's nobody even to answer a question or listen to their problems. They are dead. Terrified hands. Their hands are terrified. Even for doing day-to-day -day work, you know, they are afraid. There will be questions. Why did you do that? Uh, there will be people ready to find fault with them. So, who told you to do it? Like that. So they are terrified, ringed with ordeals, surrounded by ordeals, means very difficult, hard work. From morning till evening, they have to work hard. Get up at four o'clock, then all the work in the, in the family, till all the members of the family will go to bed, till this woman will be working. But there is no need to help. She works like a slave. She is terrified. She is terrified. Her world is here the world of green, but here is the world of terror. Ringed with order. Mastered by, and she is mastered by her husband. 
for the male members of the family. So what you find here is a stark contrast between life of a man and the life of a woman in this world. And that is what she is trying to present before the society by way of a, a, a needlework on a tapestry. Needlework. And that is what you find in this poem. The poem is the needlework. The poem, Aunt Jennifer has a panel, but that panel is translated into language in these three stanzas. That's summary just said. So it is a tapestry panel tells the story of a woman's miserable life under the restrictions imposed on her life Life, more than that, after marriage. So the poem is about that. It is a tapestry panel. Tells the story. Tells the story of what? A woman's miserable life under the restrictions imposed on her life. Throughout her life and also particularly after her marriage when she gets a master and she becomes a slave. All the characteristic behavior pattern of patterns of a slave can be seen in these words. Fluttering, heavily sits, huge burden, working all day. See? Living in a world of desert, a desert world, yes. Government top us, then prancing. And next, they got words like uh, pacing proud, confident, yes. unafraid, not afraid of anybody. Living in a world of green, then sumptuous life, luxury. So this is the contrast. To present this, she would have written a novel, but this would be, this is more, you can say, very compact, compact, like a capsule. Open the capsule, you will find the, the miserable, the sufferings of a woman in a world, in a world dominated by men. This is a poem, understand that. It's not my opinion. I am explaining the poem. Please don't misunderstand me. Okay. okay. Now here they are. Here what? There is the background of the poem. Now I told you about the poet. The poet, an American poet, that says feminist. Feminist. Feminist means a person who supports the issues of women. What are the issues? Their slavery, their, uh, they cannot move freely in the society, they don't have economic freedom, they don't get, uh, there is a gap as far as employment is concerned, only certain jobs they can take, others they cannot. Of course, there are a lot of changes that have taken place. This is 1951. A situation. The poem was published in 1951 in her book, A Change of World. That was the name of the book. Book of Poems, A Change of World. So 1951, not now. They are not a presentation. Nobody to uh, listen to their problems. All the while she was the slave. She was working like a slave even in the family. Nobody was concerned about her, considered to be subhuman. That was in 1951, not now. So that is feminist means. Feminist simply means a woman, can be a man also can become a feminist. Provided you support the cause of uh, the rights of women. Rights of women. If you are supporting the rights of women, you can, you can also be called a feminist. So feminist, very influential in the second half of the 20th century. 
This is a 1951 poem published in her book of poems, A Change of World. Deals with a woman suffering in a male dominated world. Male power. Yes. Male domination is exercised through the traditional institutions of marriage and patriarchy. Marriage is a traditional institution, institution. No? According to custom, you have to traditionally you have to marry a man or a you have to have a married life. And the married life, the relationship is not equal. Understand? So those people feminists, they argue for that, they fight for that. They have the rights of women. And the patriarchy, I told you, the big father, the big father. If you want to move in the family, you have to ask permission of the big father. Now, of course, all those things have disappeared. Now you have got a nuclear family. <laughs> no more this. Undivided family, isn't it? Now you have got the, the nuclear family. And I don't know whether it may be good. It has got its, its uh, advantages. It's like that. You can think of that. And now, the background, I told you, the key words or lines are the massive weight of the wedding band, master slave, wedding band, very after after marriage, from birth to death she is suffering, but after marriage it is doubled. The massive weight of the wedding band, wedding band means that uh, the certain symbols for the wedding ring. So by that what happened, you become the property of that man, once upon a time. The man can possess her, but not, I don't know, I, uh, person situation of course, undergone great changes. And then you have got echoes from the grave, even after death, that miserable voice of the woman can be heard. That is what the voice says. Okay. I have written the point for you. I think you got that idea now. Yes. In simple words, what is it after all? It is the suppression of men, suppression of women by men. Domination of unreasonable domination of women by men. The miserable life that women lead in the society because of male domination or male power. And uh, that um, misery. From birth to death, it is doubled after marriage, even after death, its echoes can be found in the society. That's all. And the poet uses a lot of poetic devices like uh, alliter alliteration, metaphor, hyperbole, and so on, that we will see later. Now we will read the poem. One thing of his tiger is pranks across a screen, that is, I do a tapestry panel. A frame in which she is doing this needlework. Bright topaz denizens, denizens means citizens. Bright topaz denizens. They are bright and they are like the precious stone, yellow precious stone of a world of green. I told you what is meant by world of green. There they have everything, paradise. They don't fear the men beneath the tree. They pace in sleek, chivalrous certainty. They are moving around like soldiers or knights, K-N-I-G-H-T-S. They are moving around like the knights of the knights of the Middle Ages. And they are considered, they are respected, they were respected, they were gentlemen, they were very courteous. Sleek means good looking, not very fat. <laughs> if you are very fat, then you cannot say you are sleek. So the first answer tells you all about male domination. They live happily, they have got great confidence, they can pace, they can move around, they can, they enjoy everything in this world, world of green. So they can prance, they pace like a chivalrous knights of the good old days and so on. So the second stanza is a stark contrast. I say. On Jennifer's fingers fluttering through the world, through her world. Her world means this tapestry panel. Or it can be a canvas, or it can be a, a cloth of wool, 
Lord can be sick or whatever it is. So she her hands are fluttering, just shivering like this. But she is afraid. That is a fear psychosis has gripped her. She she cannot she does not have uh, respect for herself. She she is not she is afraid of even herself. That is the thing. Fear psychosis. The world of fear. Therefore, fluttering. Find even the ivory needle hard to pull. She is using an, an ivory needle for uh, stitching. And that is difficult for her to pull. She will push inside, then take it back, then she will end up. The massive weight of Angus wedding band. She is married. Angus wedding band. That is the ring. The, the wedding ring, wedding band. The authority, wedding band is the authority of the male over women. That is the symbol. Sits heavily upon on the universe. Heavily means you cannot take it away. It is there once and for all. Once you are married, you are a slave. That is the end of it. this. Then third is, third stanza. First two stanza, simple contrast to cancer. When all is dead, her terrified hands will lay still. Still ringed with ordeals she was mastered. Even after that, people will say, people will speak about that. Oh, how terrible was the life of that lady. Her hands don't move, but even that hands will tell you a story of a master slave relation. So was mastered by but what about the tigers? First two land, then again the contrast. The tigers in the panel that she made will go on prancing proud and unafraid. That means there is no end to this. In the society, as long as tradition and the society continue like this, there is not going to be any escape or emancipation of women will remain a far, far cry. It will never happen. That's the thing. So indirectly, the poet is asking us, do something. Otherwise, this unjust, miserable condition will end. As they will go on. What will happen to men? They will go on prancing proud and unafraid. But what about women? Miserable. Even after her death, people will say, oh, such and such aunt, she was leading a very miserable life, that angry, he was a horrible and terrible person. Understand? And that is the meaning of poetry. Now different poetic devices used to accept that we will see in the next class. And with that we say goodbye to class 12. Class 11 already we have done all the lessons, now this is class 12. Hope that all the classes that I have taken from you people, class 11 and class 12, useful to you and uh, you and then in that case you should share with your friends and let's enjoy learning together. Learning is a joint adventure. Myself and yourself, teachers and students. So you can have your suggestions, send me your opinion or your suggestions and also we will have a shared academic life. Bye, have a nice day.